Hello guys, welcome. This video I want to give you a little rundown of this battery box that I've just built. Now, for some time I've wanted to build a power supply um, with various different 12 volt outlets for my application which is mainly amateur radio but this box could be used for camping, off-grid living, whatever but uh, currently all we have on it is 12 volts um, and USB but I do have plans you know, to, to put different additions for charging and a mains inverter and so on and so on. Um, so the platform it's actually based on is a Max 400 case. Now Max cases I'm a big fan of. I have three or four of these. Um, they're made in Italy um, and th they have some impressive specifications made to some impressive standards. So if you're Considering buying a Max and you're in Europe, I would definitely recommend one of these uh, over a Pelican case. But of course, it depends what you're going to put inside it and of course, the value. So, if we take a look at the, the, the case itself, on the far end, you can see that we've actually got two LEDs. Now, these are 9 watt LEDs. They're actually yellow. Um, I wanted the white ones, but foolishly, I ordered the wrong ones, but they're actually really quite good. There's then a switch in the middle to switch that. Coming around to the middle, you can see that we've got another two LEDs that are switched. We have got another two switches which then turn on a cigar socket or cigarette socket standard is what you would get in your car. There's a, there's a 10 amp fuse on that. We have the USB socket, so we have a USB 3 and two USB PD sockets for super fast charging. And I've just had my phone connected to this and I can confirm that it's super, uh, super fast at charging. And I wanted the independent switch um, because if this is perhaps noisy at radio frequency, I could then switch it off um, and, and not, not use it. On the bottom here, this is what I really wanted. These are Anderson power pole connectors. Now these are the, they all look the same. So the 15, the 30 and the 45, but these are the 30 amp versions. I have each of these fused at 25 amps, but I'm not using the four in each one. I'm using top left, bottom right. Now, the reason that I did that is because the way that these um, housings are, you simply cannot fit um, four power poles into one if you have like a, a cover or a sheath around your power pole connector, but I can get away with diagonals and it was really, was four that I needed. So these are just dummies, these ones. Um, and you could see that they're actually upside down, one set to the other. Um, and that's it. That's that's to prevent you um, choosing two at the same polarity, or you know, it's it's a pokey yoky thing. So you really can't muck it up, especially when it's dark. So that's what we're using there. These receptacles are actually really cheap. The ones that I really wanted were Powerworks, and they were like thirty dollars, um, and a lot of shipping to get from the states because we can't get them here in in Europe. Um, but these were quite cheap. I'll put a link to everything down in the description. Um, Round to the far side, you can see that we've got another two LEDs that are switched. We've got these two uh, bolts here, cap screws, stainless steel, and these are actually holding the fuse on the inside, which I'll show you again in a minute. You can see that we've got this little lanyard uh, rope here, and that's actually holding the uh, isolator. This is a 200 amp isolator. Um, I think it will do short term, it will do 300, and it's rated at 30 volts. Um, but I didn't know that this actually had a removable um, switch. So the reason that I've put this little rope on here is so I don't lose it. So you can see I've drilled the hole, put a bit of string through, put a knot on it. I mean, it shouldn't come off. I mean, that's it. That's it in the off position. But just in case it gets nudged, I'm not going to lose it. And I'm not going to be then without a power supply. So what we'll do is we'll then just put the battery on. And then you can see we can put the lights on. And if we go around to the front, not a lot of action really. So you could see that this PD socket, USB, it won't turn on. So we then turn that on. You could then see we've actually got a voltage, which is really quite good. And we've got a little cover on there. Now the reason that I switched this is it may be noisy at radio frequency. So it may upset my radios and get some background noise. So hence why I have done that. But if it really is quite too noisy, then I'll probably consider um, switching it out. On the top here, you can see that we've got 
some bolts here and the reason for that is that's actually holding the fuse box on apologies for the uh, focus there and what we'll do is we'll crack open the box some of you might actually <gasps> big gasps when I do this but uh, yeah let me explain so in the top of the box we have our uh, fuse fuse box now this is a this is rated at 100 amps continuous obviously that's split between all 12 uh, inputs I could actually take the cover off there we're not using all of them you could see that we're using six seven eight nine I think these are 10 amps these are not sure what these are those are these are 25s and these are what are these these are two amps I think and um, these are going to the LEDs now you can see that the colors are a little bit funny so I'm not sure how they are in your country so I have the battery lead here the positive and the negative actually this is a negative uh, it's got a, these some fuse boxes don't have a negative feed on them as such I have all these so I got one that did so I was actually running low on cable and I didn't want to spend a fortune on copper so what I did was I had some 10 gauge wire um, AC wire so the blue is actually the negative so I'm thinking of that as the neutral and the brown which is the which is the positive and in an AC system that would be a live and obviously you can see the rest of them are just red and black there three there and three here so at the centre of this all, um, the battery, now this is a Fogstar Drift 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, I've done a video overview of this battery already. I will link that down in the description and you can have a look at that. But I'm really impressed with this battery um, and it's ideal for my needs. Um, stuffed down the side here where we've still got a bit of room for expansion. This is actually my mains charger and this is the only way that I can actually charge the uh, battery at the minute so we have the crocodile clips take those out got the mains cable and down in here we have the charger this is a 20 amp charger these are quite common on Amazon so you can see that we've got a lot of space down there now the first thing I did with the box is I actually made these little uh, plastic sheets in the bottom the white stuff is actually just double-sided tape and this is to stop the battery moving about it's, it's it just sits in there but it can't move about at all the one thing I need to do is I need to get a little bit of hard foam or a little bit of material here so when we fold the lid it, it just touches against the box so if the box rolls because just now the battery could actually lift that's one thing that I still need to do so that's the battery we've got um, 16 millimeter wire and that's one of the mistakes that I made. I actually purchased the a cheaper wire that wasn't the super flexible battery wire because initially I thought my fuse box was going to be down in here. But hey ho, we learn with our mistakes. So I've got the super flexible battery wire because obviously as we open and close. So if we follow the circuit, coming from the positive, we actually go, it's difficult to see, but there is a fuse box here, or a fuse, sorry. And that's just a midi fuse, so there's a 100 amp fuse in there comes over to here which is our isolator again sorry it's not massively clear and then that then goes into the distribution box and for the negative it's quite simple it just goes straight from the negative terminal to the negative on the fuse box um, looking down in here I've kind of arranged the wire so first thing I did was everything that's in there it goes quite neat or it's semi neat so basically I can all if I want to take the battery out of this only thing I need to do is, is disconnect this and this pull the battery out and it's and it's good to go and um, again one of the things I need to do is I need to get caps for these it's unlikely someone's going to short across these but one of the little things that I need to do um, and then you can see all our little um, connectors inside here so we've got the switch on the top there we've got our cigar socket we've got our USB socket and on these you can see that I've used slightly different terminals and um, these are new to me these are flagpole terminals because if I used one of these standard crimp terminals we would have been touching the battery I can't even get my finger in there so my my sorry my pinky even my pinky I can't I can't fit down in there so it is tight but it, it does work down below it's hard again hard to see 
you can see that we've got our power pole connectors uh, put into there and I actually got the proper power pole crimping tool which made that an absolute doddle and what I should say is that when you're assembling these if you use this style of housing you get a little pin and you need to make sure that all the connectors are perfectly flush as they go together for, in order for that pin to go through because the pin goes through the housing through the two sets of uh, power poles and come out the bottom now as I said earlier I'm using this charger to actually charge it just now but ideally in the future I want to put a DC to DC charger so I can charge it from my vehicle um, as well as a, an MPPT solar. Now Renergy makes a unit, I'm not sure if it would actually fit in here uh, but I've, I've left this space open um, so that side's entirely open. I still have a bit of space here on the front so I've got room for one, two, three even on this side, I've got a bit of space here as well. So I was thinking about putting some of the big Anderson, like 100 amp uh, connectors on here. So I could put a DC to DC charger in here. When I get in my car, I can have a lead. I could wire that in no problem. Just plug it into the car um, and charge the battery that way. Or it could also get used for solar. I could buy a solar panel, solar charge controller and, and, and do it that way. And I could actually just keep these outboard if need be. I don't actually need to put them uh, inside the box. And again, the reason for the 100 amp power battery is I can draw continually 100 amps. Now drawing 100 amps from here, which would let me power a 240 volt. So that means 1000 watt inverter. And that's going to power absolutely everything I need. Um, so if I want to go camping, maybe I want to get an air fryer or a low wattage kettle or something we can actually run that but if I start to run an inverter I really need to figure out how to charge this out in the field and that's why I would want to have the solar um, and or the DC to DC charger and I could just start the car and run it but for the time being this this smart charger is going to be absolutely fine and um, I'm still going to be able to take this battery out for a weekend or even a long weekend run my 100 watt radio no problems at all and still come back with power now, the, those eagle-eyed of you will notice that there is no battery meter on it, so there's no shunt on it, which would be on the negative here. Well, that's because I don't need one. Um, this battery has a built-in, I think it's a GBD a battery management system, BMS. So I just simply go into my phone, I go into the app, it connects via Bluetooth, and I can see the exact status of the battery, how fast, how much it's charging, current, so charging current, discharging current, etc um, etc et how much it's actually got left so this has got about uh, 95 amp hours left of the 105 um, at the point of making this video so yes it, it could be a future development I might want to put a shunt in here we'll see um, I'm not saying I'm not but that would be relatively easy for me to do we'll see maybe I can get a deal on one but for now I've got the app on my phone and it works absolutely great um, what don't I like about this, the downsides, well, you see these LEDs that's in here? I really like these, but it's very difficult to see these wires are incredibly thin. Now, that's the PVC, there's my finger. Look how thin that is. And then when you take that sheath off, there is hardly any copper. There's two or three tiny copper strands, and it's too small to actually put onto a crimp connector. So what I actually did was, I actually just joined the wires together, and actually soldered them direct to the terminal of the switch and I did that on all three but with me doing that I needed to insulate them somehow so this black stuff that you can see on here this is actually liquid electrical tape fantastic stuff and um, so that's basically got me covered for shorts or so on anything rattling about I'll probably put some USB cables in here so when I'm out and about I don't need to worry about carrying anything extra but you know, guys, this is my first build. If you could think of a name for this battery, let me know. I'd like to call it something. Um, I don't know what to call it. So if you think of any cool names, put them down in the comments. Uh, let them know. Again, I'm not an expert. There could have been things done differently. I could have maybe used a negative bus bar, put it down here, ran a single wire. There's a number of the things I could have done or even just run it to the battery here. A number of things I could have done differently that I didn't. Um, what I would say is, if you're going to build a box, plan, 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 and then plan some more. Um, I actually used masking tape and I basically covered all the, 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 the areas and I basically drew on what I wanted where and that really helped me visualise what I needed to do. Build time for the box, 
Um, raw building time is probably five hours or so, six hours perhaps, with a lot more planning in between. Um, tools wise, you need to buy some tools. So, um, for example, um, I actually bought two sets of crimpers for this. So these are my power pole crimpers. I'll put a link to these down in the description. And I also bought this. So for the little flag poles that I talked about earlier. Again, these are just from Amazon. Chinese made. No problems at all. But now I've got them, it would make any future builds just so much easier and quicker. And for drilling the holes, these were... These needed inch and a quarter or 29 millimeter. Um, I had 30 mils, which were just a little bit too loose. So I wanted to make again make sure that I got everything nice, snug, fit as possible. All right, I've waffled on for long enough here. Let me know your thoughts. Have you made one of these? What would you do different? Um, what should have I? What should have I done different? You know, different ways. We've all got different ideas, and we all do things differently. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.